all doing? I hope you're all doing fine. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for returning back here. If you are a returning subscriber, just know that I don't take you for granted. God bless you. But if you're new here, hello, welcome to my channel. Please, before you leave, remember to subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on that notification bell. You will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I promise you, you will always enjoy every content that I upload in this channel. So dear friends, today's video is going to be a story time of a Ugandan lady by the name of Rusov who found love on online dating apps with a German guy. Rusov is a Ugandan based in Germany. Also guys, something else you need to know about today's story, it's gonna be a unique one because I've never shared a story like this <laughs> in my channel. Rusov will be telling her story to you guys. <laughs> you will enjoy it very, very much. To add something else about today's story, Rusov was in an interracial relationship before in the past. <laughs> And right now, she is in an interracial relationship. I know you're confused right now. Bella, what are you talking about? To know all this, just sit down, relax, with a glass of wine, a glass of water, some popcorn, and enjoy this beautiful online dating success love story that will teach you lots, lots, lots of things. But guys, before we jump into this love story, I've got a disclaimer for you. So guys, Rusov and I are sharing this love story to you because I'll be here, you know, guiding you through the whole story. <laughs> But my intention to share this story with you guys is to encourage you, is to open your eyes, especially you ladies that are interested in interracial dating. Be aware of things that you can come across while in an interracial relationship. When you see those things, you're like, ah, Bella talked about it. Oh yes, I heard this in the story that Rusov shared with us. It is to make you strong, be informed. I told you guys that when you are doing something and you know you've got enough information, it really gives you some confidence. So this is not a video to discourage you, not at all. Because I know the first part, after hearing it, you'll be like, Maybe I should change my plan <laughs> to look for a white man. No, guys, this video intends to lift you up. And lastly, guys, before we start hearing from Rusov, I remember the first time seeing her comment was like, Bella, I would like to talk to your subscribers, give them some tips concerning interracial dating, give them some tips concerning online dating apps. And you know, on the comment section, it's not all that easy to write everything <laughs> that Rusov is about to share with you. I was very happy to get her comment because you know what guys, I told you, we all have got something to learn from each other. And before I forget, <laughs> Rusov is a content creator too. I'm gonna be writing her YouTube channel name here, which goes by Life with Rusov. So let's hear from her. Hi everyone. What? Um, so my name is Rusena. I'm going to be talking about how I found love online, but allow me to first introduce myself to you. Um, I go by Rusov on all social media channels that means facebook instagram tiktok twitter and then ruth hoff on youtube of course um i'm a ugandan randan born and raised in uganda i'm a practicing social worker living in germany for more than 15 years now and uh, a mom of two loving boys not forgetting i'm very very passionate about social empowerment which you probably get to know about later and explains my journey here on social media so much as I'm going to be telling you how I found love online, I'm also going to be telling you honestly about the realistic side of online or even analog dot dating, things that you should watch out for, things that are important to keep in mind. How do I get um, that successful love story 
but most of all i think i should begin with how did i end up in germany so my story begins in kampala uganda um i freshly graduated from university uh still very very young you know uh, beginning of my 20s and uh, my plan is actually to enroll for a master's degree and uh, at that time i have nothing like dating in mind i'm not thinking about men um but as fate would have it one day i meet this gentleman we met at a party and i remember actually the first thing he paid attention to were my hands uh because i believe i have very beautiful hands or i've had so often and they have nice natural long nails when they don't cut them short so like he started by you know drawing attention to my hands and oh you have nice hands and blah 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 i'm saying blah 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 because for me i was irritated i was like yeah go on you know i wasn't really interested at the time but somehow we got into conversation and um long story short we started dating so our dating experience was a beautiful one and i would say a normal one you know like anyone who's dating someone analog like it wasn't an, a long distance relationship uh, maybe i forgot to say my ex-husband <laughs> was at the time also living in uganda and working in uganda so it was easy for us to date like go out go on short trips buy me flowers you know spoil me it was a beautiful experience um and like i said we were both very young my ex-husband was also very young so we, we got smitten and um being someone that matters i was really focused on my career i was very very passionate about building a career i knew that i wanted to be a mom at some point of course um and the time i met my husband he was also ready to be a dad so we talked about it and we knew definitely we want to start a family so we got engaged uh, we went to my parents did that traditional wedding and all that and a few months in i was pregnant we were over the moon very happy about it considering that we're very passionate parents both of us and um we got our firstborn baby um when our son was born even during the pregnancy and by the time i was born i was still working uh after he was born i stopped working i'll get to that later um and then around when he was close to two years we decided or my husband suggested we relocate to germany you know his reasons were of course he had been to germany we had been traveling a lot but it was like who knows maybe at some point 10 years 20 years from now we might have to relocate to germany how is it going to be for our child as a interracial child you know so let's just give it a try and if you don't like it there we can always leave why did he say if you don't like it there personally i never ever wanted to relocate i was a mom and dad's girl and i wanted to stay as close to my parents as possible so i definitely never wanted to relocate but when you get married and get kids you really have no big choice about that so i had to take the compromise in my case i call it compromise um and we relocated to germany um when we got to germany that was one big culture shock for me like you know it's different when you come to germany as a guest as a visitor as a tourist you know everything is nice and, and you come to the best season and all that but when we get we got here i felt like i'd been thrown in a sea of freezing water that's what it felt like for me so why do I say I felt like I'd been thrown into a, a sea of very, very cold water? Um, German in Uganda or East Africa in general have lots of differences. We came when it was close to winter, so that means it was very cold. Um, it means the code of dressing had to change. I'm someone who loves to dress, you know, in my short skirts and dresses, which is normal com compared to the fact that in Uganda we have very nice weather. So I got here and here I am, you know, shopping tights. And I'm here shopping jeans. <laughs> I don't, I think I had one pair of trousers in Uganda, it wasn't even jeans, I had pants, you know. So for me, that was a shock. And then I had to buy a winter jacket, and then, you know, like you need sweaters to keep you warm. And then <laughs> I remember in our bed, like that, the blankets are so thick and so heavy. I remember telling my husband, I think I got a hip dislocation from this blanket. And it's not a joke, like I always felt like my hip was hurting because of the weight of this blanket, you know. So those are some of the shocks that I got, but not forget uh, 
we also have the luxury of a soft life in Uganda, especially if you have the financial muscle to live that kind of life. When I compare my life to Uganda and Germany when I came, for me, the life I had in Uganda was a luxury. I had a very, very soft life. You know, you have assistants, you have nannies, you have gardeners, you have helpers here and there. And then um, I remember what I missed most was going to the, you know, like to the spa every Friday. That means on every Friday I used to go do my hair, get my facial, do my pedicure and manicure, maybe get a massage depending on the day. And I missed all those things, you know, like you don't get to do those things in German just on a whim, you know. And then I miss the fact, I won't say friends, because being an introvert, I didn't have many friends and I'm very fine being alone. But I miss also the spontaneity of, you know, one afternoon after work, the same as a stay at home mom, as in working. But like in Uganda, whether you're a stay at home mom or you're working, you can easily call up a friend, an acquaintance, and you're like, oh, should we hang out? Shall we go have a coffee? And I missed all that. In Germany, you had to plan everything like a month before. And then the community I get in, I got in, it was very welcoming. My sisters-in-law, uh, the friends, the wives of my husband's friends. Problem is they were all much older than me. I'm talking about you're a 20 year old and you're in a group of women that are 35 plus 40. So that was for me also not so great. Of course, it was good. I could learn a lot from them, but it was so like different. Like my, my desires couldn't be understood by them because they were in a different stage in their life you know and this was the country this was the lifestyle that they were used to you know so it was kind of different um anyhow first forward uh, my husband and i are living here our son joins kindergarten what you call nursery school we are having an amazing life like i said i don't know if i talked about it my husband and i one thing that really we had in common we were both very passionate about traveling so for all the time we're together, I must say, we had fun. Like, we're very spontaneous people. So we're traveling, like, all the time. I don't remember how many days my son went to kindergarten because it was, it was like, we're traveling, traveling, traveling. So it was a nice life. Problem was, uh, like I said at the beginning, building my career was very, very important to me. So that means at some point, I, of course, um, what's going in my eye? I, of course, wanted to work, you know? So, my husband was not so keen on that. You know, like he was earning well, we were financially stable. So for him, he thought, why do you need to work? You're a mom now, you take care of the kids. And that's like, no, no, no. You know, um, before I became a mom, I was me, you know? And for me, that's very, very important to me. I'm a very good mom, uh, but that doesn't change the fact that you can be a mom and still fulfill all your dreams and goals. So I was like, yes, I'm fine being a mom. I'm happy being a mom. But I also want to work. It doesn't have to be full time. It can be just a few hours. Um, <clears throat> but I definitely want to work. So, unfortunately, I tried so hard, and then we reached a time where I noticed it was never going to work out. Like he was not comfortable with that. And for me, there was non-negotiable. I knew a hundred percent. I wanted to build my career. I wanted to to do more out of my life than just sitting at home and going shopping and going on holiday, which was fun, you know, but I needed a connection out there, you know, to do something. You need a change of scenery. You can't be a mom 24 seven. At some point you're like, oh my God, enough, you know? So I really wanted to work. And um, for me, that was the reason I had to file for divorce. So I separated from my husband and also immediately filed for divorce because I'm someone who believes when you do something, then do it 100%. I don't do half-big stuff. Whatever I do in life, I do it consequently. So I knew once you separate, the best way to do it is apply for divorce. Because like I said, um, I don't do this back and forth, you know. So I wanted to make it very clear, very straight for my ex-husband to know there's no going back. Um, so putting a brief stop there. It is also being a social worker, like I said, and someone that is doing social empowerment here on social media. It's important to highlight a little bit why all this had to go this way. Someone would wonder if would have reached a compromise, if would have tried this and that. But I would call it, those are, for example, some of the red flags that you should look out for when you're dating someone. If you're dating someone and he doesn't want you to work, if you're dating someone and he's not supportive of your dreams and your goals, if you're dating someone that is not willing to take compromises, that means that's a red flag and you have to question yourself before you marry this person or if you're married to them uh, is this something i can live with for the rest of my life or it's something that i can bear 
and if you decide it's not something that you can live with for the rest of my of your life then you have to consider so in my case that was it and in retrospect i believe the reason he really didn't want me to work it was because of the jealousy you know and someone will ask me did you see the red flags when you're still dating yes looking back all the pointers were there but you know when you're in love and it's meeting and everything is so sweet and nice you're like oh my god he loves me so much oh my god he's so caring but those can be red flags yes 100 percent i knew um quite early in in our marriage that he was jealous but i thought it's something that we could handle you know that we could reason out as adults uh, but for me that i think was the main deal breaker for us and uh, you can't cure jealousy you can't heal someone with jealousy either they're willing to work on it or they're not so that's definitely a red flag that you should be looking out for so like i said I applied for divorce and as you know we're talking about divorce in europe divorce in germany many of you if you're someone who's probably already got a love story and you're married we pray that it works out forever because no one gets married to divorce that was never my intention i believed being the romantic i am that we're going to stay together for eternity you know but unfortunately it didn't work out that way and that's life so when you all here looking for love stories and looking for your soulmates you really have to be realistic and keep in mind there's a possibility of it not working out you know so if it doesn't work out especially if you're marrying and it's uh, someone of another race you're into an interrelation interracial marriage or relationship um you have to consider and ask yourself what happens how does a, a divorce work here so of course the dynamics of our divorce were like any other divorce that was bad blood at the beginning uh thank god it wasn't really toxic but of course especially if someone is still in love with you it's really difficult to go through a divorce so it was tough i'm not going to lie about that but good thing is we were both very clear about very important things like when it came to parenting we both knew we wanted shared custody because i knew he's an amazing dad you know one thing you really have to keep in mind is someone not being a perfect partner or lover or husband doesn't make them a terrible parent in some cases yes they are but in our case he wasn't appropriate for me he was no longer right for me as a partner or a husband but he was an amazing dad and that's something i wasn't going to deny him or his parental rights so we're very clear on that and then from my side since i'm the one who left the marriage i had to set my boundaries you know i had to make it very clear we're no longer a couple we're no longer in love but we're going to be parents for the rest of our lives we're going to be a family for the rest of our lives whether we love each other or not as long as we have our kids we'll always be bound you know we'll always have this bond so it was important for me to set those clear boundaries and you know say we'll put our children first for whatever conflicts we have we sold them outside of our parenting so as i speak now we're doing amazing we're co-parenting basically i would say we're very good friends he's my family here but it only worked out and it's only working because i set the boundaries very clear and it took him time but he got to learn and respect my boundaries and of course i totally understand if i was the one that if he had left me and i was still in love with him i think i would have reacted the same so i had a lot of understanding you know and patience with him but i was also very strict and set my boundaries and that's something you have to keep in mind and then you have to think about the dynamics of a divorce in europe it is very very complicated you know so i remember i filed for divorce and it took us around two years to get the divorce <laughs> and uh why, why is it that way there are lots of things that have to be cleared out the legalities of everything and especially if you have kids you must be separated for at least one year to even be granted divorce you know so all those things since we didn't have prenup so all those things had to be sorted out uh, oh my god lots of very self-confident person and i'm someone who works very well alone being an introvert so that helped so you really have to prepare for all eventualities. So dear friends, from her past marriage, we've got something to learn. And I've talked about this. I am so glad that we have got a vivid example today in today's story. Yes, I told you guys, when you begin your relationship and you see a guy is serious, before you move to marriage, something that is so, so important, <laughs> You should ask this guy a kind of a wife that he wants. Please, please. Because some white guys have got their own fantasy, have got their own idea 
of a wife that he wants okay i'm gonna give you some examples some white guys would want to take a black african woman they get married and then after getting married wants that woman to stay at home you stay at home take care of the house take care of the kids if you make kids take care of the husband take care of him <laughs> when he returns back home everything is ready you are there you know to welcome him with a big hug and a kiss <laughs> everything is good there is peace there is happiness there is love he wants that kind of a wife but him wanting that doesn't make him a bad man no guys it is all about what he wants so it is up to you dear beautiful ladies to ask this guy before he marries you because if you're going to assume you know just like Rosoff, i think when she was there you know getting to know the husband <laughs> was like how would someone stop me from working so she was just relaxed knowing that the husband is going to allow her go to work because for her it was just a normal thing <laughs> that's why she never asked before getting married and we see she got married and later on wanted to work wanted to be a career woman it led to the divorce so guys i am here talking to you that be careful talk about these things when i tell you ask questions this is among of the questions you should ask a guy when you start chatting and you see a guy is serious so the second example of a wife <laughs> a white man can be searching for especially in black women he wants to take a black african woman so you start chatting everything is good then you guys get married his idea is for you to be the wife the mother and also go to work so that you can help each other <laughs> on paying the bills so when you get married without talking about that then he tells you it's time to go to work <laughs> you are like no for me i just wanted to be a stay-at-home mom but maybe do some small hustles and then that's it i don't want to go to work you will fight a lot or you'll be like yes i want to go to work but my money is my money i don't want to be like splitting the bills or help you pay the bills i want a responsible man i want a man who will take care of everything <laughs> but you never talked about it <laughs> so you're going to end up in two fights and that marriage won't last at all and i also know some white guys who are so flexible okay maybe his own idea is to have a stay at home mom you take care of the kids and do everything stay at home so he talks to you maybe you are in africa you've got your good good job it pays you very very well but because you have to relocate to his country let's say in europe maybe australia america wherever part of the world where that man is coming from you have to leave everything behind and you tell him i am leaving everything behind but i want to be getting something every month so a guy who is flexible can compromise whereby he will tell you okay you are leaving everything behind leaving your job i'm gonna be paying you every month the same same amount you were receiving at work i know some of you might be like bella do such kind of a man exist they exist guys i know so many <laughs> that are paying their wives every month you stay at home take care of everything and at the end of the month he pays you the same salary that you were receiving before because you left your job okay but all this that i'm telling you guys it doesn't happen like that without you guys talking about it you have to talk before making that big step which is getting married so always talk so guys what is very very important here is for you to be with a man who will accept support what you want to do in your life 
if that guy doesn't want to support you, if that guy doesn't care anything <laughs> about your goals, about your ambitions, about what you want to do, about what makes you happy, dear sister, move forward or start a new chapter whereby you will be happy. Um, I'm not sure now if I should dive into my love story, but um, let's, let's first complete you know, the tough stuff. So I'm going to give you another example as regards divorce. I have people asking me a lot, going back to my profession, like I said, I'm a practicing social worker. I work here in Germany as a social worker. So through my career, through my work as a social worker, I've been, I've experienced different situations, broad spectrum, like I can't go in everything, but there are some cases that really stuck to my mind, and especially situations that involve women or situations that involved people with immigrant background. We're talking about Euro Kenyan, married or German or British or whatever, because we're talking Europe wise now, yeah? So I'll give you two examples of cases that for example, why did I start my social empowerment journey? Mainly, of course, I'm on Facebook, Instagram and all that, but I serve most of this advice and services on YouTube because it's the only format where I can really dive deep and long into such questions. So I've been able to do my work professionally, but also through my social empowerment journey, I've been able to help many people on the private side now with my social empowerment journey People have had situations like you meet a German guy, he's nice and loves you and tells you he's single and all that. He even tells you I want us to have a family, so you get pregnant. That is a real case that I'm talking about. I'm not going to say which country out of respect for my clients. So this girl got pregnant and when she was around three months pregnant, she told him, oh, we're having a baby. And he's like, I don't want a baby. And she's like, oh, what do you mean? You don't have a baby. You've been you know, doing all stuff without any protection. And he told me you want a family. He's like, no, 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 I don't want a baby. And he disappeared and started acting funny until when at some point, I think she was like five months pregnant. And this guy was like, to tell you the truth, I'm actually married, you know? So he met this guy in a different country. This guy lives here in Germany. He, the girl he met is an African girl living in another country. I think I'll not say the country, in another country in Europe. So I'll not say the country because I really want to respect her. So this girl, lucky enough, she, she got to discover me on Instagram and DM'd me and asked me what to do. Because imagine how you're pregnant with someone. You're, she was working lucky enough, but then she, she was like sickly, you know, you're throwing up and everything. So she was like, what will happen once I lose my job? If I go in maternity leave, I can't pay rent. How will I take care of my kid? How will I plan everything? Insurance, giving birth, uh, which nationality? How will I, you know, all those questions. So I had to take her through the process of in case something like that happens, you know. How do you get your person, your child, for example, to be recognized, you know, the, the, his identity? Like, how, how can you work through our services, the ministry, the child uh, services, for example, to make sure that your, your father, the father of the child takes responsibility, you know, that your child can maybe get uh, the, the citizenship because it is their right, birthful right, you know? Such things we had to go through and assisted her along the way. Another situation is also here in Germany, this guy had been dating a girl from Colombia, you know, and she had been visiting him several times and believed he was single and he told her he wanted to get married to her. So he invited her and she had been here like for six months, got pregnant. When she got pregnant, what does the guy do? He's like, no, 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 I want you out, I want you to fly back home. I'll take care of you from there, but you can't stay here. And the guy was like, why? You know, we're not even married and we have to sort this out. He's like, no, 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 you have to go. First of all, what happens? The guy actually stays in a certain city. So in that city where I was bringing this girl, that's where he works. You know that men that go home on weekends? So his home is actually in Berlin. He works in another city. And that's why he was able to, to bring all the girls that he was dating and sleeping around with. But all this time, this girl believed he was single and wanted to marry her and was serious about it. <laughs> Fast forward, another battle. Lucky enough, she also got to contact me through a friend of hers on, to, on my social media. And I, I was able to take her through the process. She got her child and she's still here in Germany. But why am I giving these examples? I'm trying to tell you all these things can happen. All these eventualities, it can either be very well or it can turn out negative. So you really have to be on the watch out when you're doing online dating, especially for our ladies who are, for example, getting to really, really into online dating if you're in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, wherever you are, because I have clients from all over. If you are into online dating and also distance, long distance dating, 
you really have to have your antennas out you know like you know you know that these antennas like your feelers have to be on the alert i'm going to give you an example of another client from kenya this lady met a german guy online of course he kept visiting her in kenya every three months and at some point it was like i want to marry you let's move to germany so mistakes she made or most people make he married her traditionally those are marriages that are recognized in our countries and they are legally binding problem is when she got here she didn't get the marriage registered here in germany once you marry for example in a foreign country you have to make sure when you relocate to any country in europe you have to get your marriage recognized you don't have to get married again you go to the mayor's office and get your marriage recognized registered and signed she didn't do that few months down the road this guy starts acting funny and says oh i'm going on a work trip it wasn't a work trip he flew back to kenya probably like you know online dating it is possible for a guy to be talking to you but talking to other 20 girls but for me when i go back to her story i wouldn't call it even normal because personally i would say or oh, i learned out of my experience actually if you're doing online dating don't settle too quick date at least two people at the same time dating i don't mean sleeping with them i mean dating when you're still getting to know them have a variety so that you're sure you're choosing the right one but this guy was beyond that stage because if you choose someone and you marry them you've gone beyond that stage you know um so this guy flies to kenya to his other lover he had several other girls you know and when we, he went to kenya he married this girl uh, it's mind-blowing you know you married and then you got married another one. so that is an example to show you i i will explain it one day like really really deep but it's very important for you to know that when it comes to online dating there are all sorts of people bright you know like broad spectrum we're not talking just men but also women of course you know so they're the nice people they're the middle one they're the bad and then they're scumbags so this guy for me in my case is a scumbag you know and there are lots of them online so you really have to be very careful especially white men that are explicitly interested in dating women of my migrant background most of them have strange characters most of them are perverts let me put it that way most of them are looking at you as a fantasy you know they just want to try out something exotic so you have to be very very careful and most of them know if i'm dating an african girl these guys are desperate they have no jobs they need my money so they will use you we have all sorts of stories guys asking girls for nudes if a guy starts with asking for nudes just block him you know so this girl it was a very sad story unfortunately the guy says i don't want you by the time i fly back home out of the apartment so just imagine you've come to germany you've been here for only three months you've not yet got like um she had gotten only the three year no she had gotten the one year visa why i don't know because normally when you're married you get the three year visa but probably because that it also registered their marriage so she was here stuck like i was saying i want you to leave and uh, if you stress me i'm going to make sure you get deported that one i've had it a lot i have another client from brazil who went through the same but i don't want to get you so much into these stories so this girl through my social media because that time i was very active that was end of last year i think i was very active with doing lives on instagram so a friend of hers was like oh come on join this live ask this lady if she can help you so i had to help her you know like translate the letter she was getting she was getting deportation letters because this guy said i'm not married to her in in you can't say we're married when you didn't even get your marriage recognized here you know so she was getting letters and then i had to help her like read them translate them how what do you answer back but what is also important, once you get married to someone of a different culture, you also have to keep in mind you need to integrate. So if you marry, for example, someone from Britain, from Italy, from Greece, wherever, and you relocate, first thing you should keep in mind, learn the language. Get to know the laws, you know? Make a few friends. And when I talk friends, I'm not saying you should come here and befriend all African people. No, you can even befriend German people. But make sure you create a network of beneficial people, you know? So don't befriend people that are just going to mess your life up here, but befriend people that could really be of substance to you. So integration is also very important to keep in mind. Again, that explains my entire journey here on social media, my social empowerment. Like I said, I'm very passionate about immigration, integration, parenting, and everything, social work and questions about divorce and everything that you really need to know about navigating life. So you, those are things that you really, really have to look out for. So Rosoff talked about a guy being married, then comes in Africa, you know, pretends to be single and all that. I gave you tips, guys, on how to know 
if a guy is married especially you guys that are on online dating apps searching for love you are chatting with a guy it has been you know long it's like you are in a relationship you haven't met yet or you have met already in africa you have not come yet into his country there is a way to find out so if you did not watch that video please go and watch it how to know a guy is married in his country on online dating apps exist lots lots of tricks you can use if you remember there is another video i shared here of charity and darren whereby she advised you guys to do a detective job <laughs> When that guy comes, oh my god, make sure you do a detective job. And if it is taking his phone when he goes to the bathroom to shower, go through it, it's okay. Even if it is observing that guy closely when he talks on the phone, when you are around, all the way he chats, <laughs> is he comfortable, not comfortable? That's a detective job. You will find out, trust me. You're going to avoid lots of disappointments in the future one thing that we have one thing that i'm very very sure on online dating apps exist lots of guys that are still married but they're just there wasting your time so please if you forgot about this can you please start working on it <laughs> let's do a detective job on that guy and you guys that have paid for the membership please come to me and let's talk about the guy that you are chatting to because <laughs> we need to find out as early as possible so that you don't waste much of your time you know i personally think online dating is the best thing that ever happened to humanity <laughs> i always say if it wasn't for online dating we would probably all be marrying our neighbors and, and our colleagues which is for me so boring and unethical because I can't imagine myself dating a colleague. That's for me a no-go. And then, of course, when we get to the dreamy, romantic side, romant, um, online dating gives you the possibility of meeting your soulmate that you probably would have never met, you know? Imagine a girl from Uganda meeting someone from Italy or Germany, and he could be your soulmate, she could be your soulmate, but without online dating, that would have never happened. So for me, I think it's the best thing that ever happened to humanity, but also the worst thing <laughs> because it has both extremes. But if you know how to balance it and navigate you know the situation and keep your feelers out and be careful um i think it can be very very successful and amazing and of course um for the ladies and even the gents you have to be very careful like i said that some of the red flags if someone is love, love bombing you you know they're moving everything too fast you know you have to be careful but all in the all i think online dating or just dating in general because there are people who will meet analog we have many people living here in germany and looking for love or you're already living the diaspora and you're looking for love i've had men approach me while i'm shopping in the supermarket or just driving my car especially in summer i've had men honestly try to give me their numbers when i'm stopping on the red uh what you call like on the red light you know, when you're driving and the lights turn red I've had men try to <laughs> give me their numbers, you know, so it's possible to meet someone anywhere and everywhere, you know, but what is important is how do you go about it. So talking of the beauty of online dating, how about we dive into how I found love online. So my story, like it was important to take you through the entire dynamics, the entire steps. So of course, after my divorce, honestly, for me, I wasn't into dating after that. I just want to live my life. I just wanted to work on my career, build my career, start working. You're all questioning yourselves. Oh, you're very passionate about work and career and everything. When did you start working? Like I told you, my ex-husband wasn't keen about that. So that means for the time that I was married, I was a stay-at-home mom, just enjoying life, you know, spending money and all that. But I wasn't truly happy. And that's why I had to divorce, you know. So I started working after my divorce. So I had to go the entire dynamics, like getting my uh, degrees and everything recognized. That is called the Anerkennungs process here in Germany. You have to apply for it. They have to do background search in your university where you studied and everything. And then they will decide which level you qualify. And my profession being a profession that has to do with also the law, I had to do another whole year of the German law because I work in the system, you know. So it was a long process, very uh, emotionally draining. Uh, but like I said, you really have to be very 
confident especially if you're going to get into an interracial relationship so i had to do a lot of work myself why do you have to learn the language it helps that when i was living here three months into living in germany i was already speaking german fluently could read write and everything so it helped i was here calling ministries myself clearing things asking about my papers how do i do this how do i do that but it was very draining you know there's a time i wanted to give up so yeah like i said so when i divorced it wasn't really on my priority list to get into a relationship but i had a friend or a good acquaintance who was like what you can't you can't just be here and you you just have to date just for the fun of it and see what's there and see what happens you don't have to like settle just try it so one evening we're chatting and she's like how about you try out online dating i had never heard about online dating <laughs> like i told you i got married very young very fresh from the university analog so there's never any desire for me to, to even look for a man because when i get married and when oh, i'm in a relationship with someone i'm really a very faithful person so i can never have more than one relationship either one ends and i start another one but i can't like juggle two partners at the same time that's for me a no-go and it shouldn't happen you know that's comeback behavior so she was like i joined online dating so she opened up a profile for me i don't even remember what picture she put there honestly because i thought it was a joke and before i knew she comes on anything and she's like check your posts your mail oh my god you know like i had i i swear i think after 24 hours i had more than 1500 messages i was overwhelmed as like no i don't have first of all the time to waste on this nonsense that's what i called it because it was too much as like how do i choose someone out of all these people so she was like take your time like we said you're just diving into the waters we're just having fun no one is saying you have to date just go through the messages so i started to go through the messages and then of course for me most important what can also help you how do you filter through so many people as women i'm sure you know you get so many messages from men but out of those so many there's probably only three who are good you know so how do you filter through that you have to create a criteria what are things that are very important to you that are non-negotiable you know that you can't compromise about what are things that you can compromise about what are values that are important to you so that for me that's how i filter the main for example the height is very important to me i know that's very vain but i really have to be physically attracted to someone to date them and then the academic level, like I, I always say, I'm very, 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 very attracted to intelligent people emotionally and intellectually. So that was something I had to sort out. I wasn't dating someone who is not educated or something like that. Educational background is very important to me, consider that I'm also a very educated person. Um, then I had to look out for, you know, like their lifestyle, what do they like? Because like I said, I'm a very independent woman. I'm someone who is extremely passionate about traveling. I'm very passionate about dancing. Oh my God. okay this is good this is good so i deleted 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 and then left a few profiles that i thought were probably compatible interesting and then i started writing to them you know like they had written and then I had to answer and so out of the so many uh when the guys answered i'm someone who also believes don't chat for way too long i think it's better to if you chat back and forth maybe three four days you should phone as soon as possible why do i say that i know not everyone has that capacity but for me i have um how do they call it we call it in german mention kindness mention kindness means you're someone who is very easy who is very good at seeing through people so for me talking with someone helps a lot to decide if this person is even worth my time or not um and so yeah so after chatting back and forth with these guys that also helps me to filter because i i know how i take the conversation you have to ask the right questions what is important to you and then i could tell mm, this one definitely no this one yeah maybe so i filtered again and then remained with oh my god i don't remember maybe like with six guys so i formed with these six guys um <laughs> they were all very compatible all very interesting problem is like i said honestly 
all these guys were i don't know why but there's always this security of you know when you're a young beautiful girl uh, the men are always thinking is it just me she's dating why would she be attracted to me and all that crap sorry about the language but that's what i call it so these men were keen on like making me settle like really quickly like they were all hot on getting married to me and they were like serious and so can we do this and what do you want and can i meet your kids and blah and i was like slow down you know again thank god i've talked of kids if you're a single mom or a single dad and you're dating it's not just you dating you're also dating for your kids somehow so you have to be very very careful the kind of partner you choose and when you get your partner to meet your kids because you don't want your kids to meet different partners all the time or even meet crazy people pedophiles you know so you have to be very very careful about that so for me it was a process you know and uh, again i filtered out you shouldn't do that of course if you really really want to get married in my case it was because i was just trying the waters i wasn't really ready to get married or get too serious you know so i filtered out and i think i remained with four guys and you know i kept in touch with these guys i met them and all that um again i filtered out some guys who are really really where i could see they were serious about like getting married and i thought it wasn't fair to drag them along knowing i wasn't ready at all um some of them are people i would call you know that statement why they say who is the one that got away that statement means the one that got away is someone that probably would have made a very good partner but you lost them you know <laughs> either of your own doing or their own doing so i have some guys that i would refer to as the one that went away they were really amazing guys but they were in my life at the wrong time you know um so i settled on two i think and that is my love that i found online and the other one and then the other one, i also had to drop him because of reasons that i won't name here but one of the main reasons of course like he really really wanted us to move the next step and here i was freshly divorced in the process of you know working on my career settling in getting to understand life i was not yet even 30 years old forget for god's sake i was so young you know so i was just like i want to breathe i want to start afresh i want to know what life is because like i got married so innocent so you know like i hadn't done all those crazy things you guys have done out there <laughs> you know that's how innocent i was just like i want to breathe I want to fly i want to let my wings out i want to test the waters so i had to drop that guy and then stay with the one so speaking of the love that i found online you'd be wondering being a mom a single mom when did i get to to let him meet my kids i think it was after like six months honestly no not less than six months 100 percent it was after six months i think because i was very very strict about that reason being as a single mom or a dad if you date people please 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 don't bring them so early in the lives of your children and now i'm speaking in the perspective of a mother a social worker and a social empowerment consultant don't do that very fast it's damaging to the kids first of all when you divorce somehow your children get damaged whether you like it or not my children adopted and adjusted very well but still there will always be that damage there will always be that separation fear there will always be that loss fear so you don't want to be having different partners every time and every once in a while the children get used to the person and that person is gone it damages them and they'll grow up into damaged adults so you have to be very very careful so for me that was very important to make sure my children never get to meet anyone just because i'm feeling warm and hot about them you know so after like six months i said okay you can meet my kids and all of you waiting to know when the goodies happened when i gave up the goodies it was also after a long time i think like three months of course like you meet you touch hands you flutter around you play around but the good is it was also i think like three four months into our relationship um and i was also very strict about you know like i was like no rushing me we're doing it my way but everything the chemistry and everything was fine um fast forward of course dating is amazing uh i've been like dating for a very long time but for me to be honest marriage is no longer a priority to me like yes definitely i want to get married again and i'll get married again someday because i'm a hopeful romantic i don't say hopeless romantic that is way too negative i'm a hopeful romantic and i also believe in marriage 100 percent. but i believe for me to get married it has to be like really really someone that i hope i can spend the rest of my life with because like i told you no one gets married to get divorced and there are no guarantees in life it's possible to get divorced three four five times and it's okay 
you know do not ever settle your person is somewhere out there you'll always find your soulmate what is meant for you will find you just trust god and trust the timing that is very important for me to tell you trust god trust the timing don't get desperate your person is out there and they will find you you know so for me that's how i see marriage if and when i get married again it will be like the cherry on the top of the cake you know it won't be like the cake but it'll be the cherry on top of the cake like for me i will tell my person you got i got you you got me i love you you know but it won't be like where people get married for security or if he marries me then we're good to go talking about my divorce story is also to show you that getting married is no guarantee for anything what actually matters is you having an amazing relationship having someone that's got your back someone that supports you someone that uplifts you that's what is most important in a relationship and not this signed paper you know so keep that in mind when you're dating and when you meet the loves of your life so when the time is right and when i finally get married i'll definitely definitely share my story with you once again it's been very very amazing sharing my story with you and of course i think maybe my advice or my takeout from this is take your time enjoy the process enjoy the dating don't take it too serious um when you're still in the dating process date at least more than one person with dating i'm, I'm saying get to know more than one person so you're 100 percent sure do not compromise on things that you cannot live with for the rest of your life yes you can compromise relationships are all about compromise but it must be things that you can live with if there are things where you're like that is absolutely not negotiable then do not compromise it's been amazing sharing my story with you and uh, like i said for me my journey here is very something that i'm loving something that i'm enjoying it was tough beginning it because i'm very introverted um but it's always been my passion you know it's always been my passion to serve it's always been my passion to share knowledge and that's why i'm very active on all social media you can find me there by the name rosov and on my youtube i go by life with rosov again all results it's been amazing um i wish you all the best may you all find your soulmates thank you so much so we have heard from rose telling us that marriage is not her priority now so after hearing that i was like girl i want to get to know well about this relationship that you are telling me about that's when she was like bella we love each other very very much even if we are not married yet but we live as a married couple he is happy i am happy my kids are happy only that i'm someone who is an introvert <laughs> and i'm quiet he is quiet too so they've got lots of things in common which makes them a great couple congratulations girl in your relationship i wish you all the best i know you wish to see him but again said is a private person so i am sorry we can't see his photo but you have heard all this from rosov it's not that i'm making up stories <laughs> so to you all my sisters that are praying to God every single day, God to bring that right man in your life and eventually get married. It's not that you are wrong. I repeat again, it is all about what you want and what makes you happy. Because I know we are different guys. Some men would want just, you know, to live with you, come we stay. <laughs> Some men really likes to get married, make everything legal. You know, that's what they want in life. So you too, who wants to get married, who wants to have that fatal wedding, you are not wrong. Keep on pushing. Don't give up on your dream. That is what you want. That makes you happy. Go for it. So dear friends, I almost forgot this important question and I know most of you could have got so angry at me after watching this whole video. <laughs> the name of the dating app where Russo found the one. She found the one on the dating app called Love's Code 24. I'm going to be putting it up there so that you can see how it's written. She found the one 
after two days of registering and left that dating app after three weeks to add something there she did not pay for that dating app cause tells us if a guy is paying on that dating app then you can chat for free so guys go and try out that dating app you heard she could get lots of messages maybe it might be your time to find the one i wish you all the best in your search on love scott and on all other dating apps that you are still trying out so dear friends before i end this video please i repeat Rusov is a content creator and her YouTube channel name goes by Life with Rusov. Please go and support her. You will enjoy her content because like I told you, she is a social worker and also likes women empowerment. What else can you ask guys? You will learn lots, lots of things from our sister Rusov. So please go support, go subscribe to her channel and thank you for doing that. So friends, we have come to an end of our today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video till now. If you have liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it to your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Comment below what you think about this video. I would like to know. Watch my other videos too. They are super, super good. You're going to learn lots of things from my past videos. Please click that subscribe button and join the family. Thank you for subscribing. Until next time, guys, I love you so much. You're always here in my heart. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.